Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here, and today I thought I'd do something a little bit different instead of a haul and look forward to all the summer 2022 releases across all the different lines. Ok, well I'm going to start with the Lego City sets just because they're my favourite, and this is a really nice little one called Electric Scooters and Charging Dock, and this is all killer no filler if you ask me. We've got three fantastic minifigures, including uh, a new printed one. Uh, we've got two of these electric scooters, which we've only seen on Friends sets before. Uh, also some printed tiles on the back for the sort of charging uh, green sort of nature of them. We've had those before, but again, not very frequently, and a good solar panel as well. So I think that's a really good start to what has been a really good uh, set of releases this summer. Uh, moving on, wow, the space ride. <laughs> this is absolutely awesome, isn't it? I mean, look at that alien in the middle and this signage over here and all over the front of the truck. I absolutely love this. Uh, I do have a bit of a problem in that I'm advanced on my fairground, so fitting this in might be a real problem for me. Um, but yeah, I really like the colours and the shape of it all. It does seem to have a handle on the back here, which you turn, which creates a crank here, which turns this flower gear, which I think would just turn these rather than the alien in the middle, which does make the ride a little bit boring in some respects, and it just goes round and round on the flat. But the fact that it's incorporated into this uh, truck and probably folds up and all the rest of it, I think is excellent. And uh, I love these sort of cake bits that are suggesting these aliens are very sort of slimy and oozy. I also really like the torso print and hat of the person running a ride with this alien uh, sort of badge on it. And also this two by two tile of a photograph from somebody who's been on a ride. I mean, that just looks absolutely awesome. And a generator as well. So yeah, that's a double thumbs up from me. I think I might be getting that. Uh, next, we've got a really nice little stunts rider, actually. I mean, I really like the bike in the sense that it's kind of a... Uh, Indian slash sort of Harvey Harley Davidson type sort of cruiser type bike and I really like that shape I think the wolf on it is a bit frenzy to be honest uh, It's all a bit twee. I think it could have been a more sort of aggressive looking wolf in my opinion uh, But I love the biker in his all black outfit with chains and his sort of skull uh, sort of uh, necklace there and I imagine he's got a fantastic back print I do feel though although I'm very happy with this set, that it's missing like an accessory or something. But yeah, I like it. Here's another one. <laughs> and this one does come with an accessory, a scorpion. And wow, this is very bright and colourful, isn't it? The scorpion, I absolutely adore the helmet. And that has so much potential with uh, replacing these horns with something else. And the visor is very nice indeed. That hairpiece, I think, has only been available on Lord of the Rings uh, Orcs before. Um, but yeah, I look forward to getting that. That's actually on my wanted list. The head very much looks like one of those Mexican wrestlers. So you could pretty much use this entire character as a wrestler in the ring if you wanted to as an alternative, because the bike is pretty standard. But yeah, I think I'll be getting both of those two. <laughs> Then, oh, wow, it just doesn't get better than this. Now, if you don't laugh out loud when you see that the uh, first time, then, well, you just aren't alive, in my opinion, <laughs> because we've got a bathtub attached to a stunts bike and somebody in their swimwear with a kind of goggles helmet, uh, the taps on the front uh, and uh, the duck as well. Absolutely fantastic. That is a guaranteed lock. Uh, that is definitely getting bought. I think I'll be buying all three. <laughs> Right, next, moving on to the station. Now, this is a very nice set, in my opinion. Um, we're seeing a lot of this turquoise, dark turquoise colour in builds at the moment, and that's not a bad thing as such, except I think LEGO seem a bit excited by it, so they seem to be using it arguably too much. But, um, yeah, I do like it, and I do like the sort of glass roof, and the fact you've got this sort of uh, second floor element that's a bit different, cafe, tickets. Yeah, I like it a lot. I think my favourite detail, though, is the back of this bench with the advertising on. I think that is absolutely perfect, because you do see those in real life. So, yeah, I think that's a really good station. Uh, if we go around with the stuff that you get uh, with it, got this crossing, which I think is quite interesting how they're going to be incorporating the new style road plates with the railway. 
So it seems like they're using a combination of different slopes. It's not so much that, but the spacing that interests me because, um, yeah, if you've got these flat on your table, then it works with the railway. If you start to use um, all the mills plate system, then, wow, well, you're just going to need loads and loads and loads of pieces to raise up all your railway as well, uh, I imagine. Anyway, we've got some new torsos with a nice sort of tie-dye look there. Nice sort of uh, tank top sort of jumper there. New train crew stuff. And then one of those vehicles that goes both on roads and on rails with these wheels, uh, with a port potty or port -a on the back, and a lovely dark azure bus. Now, I've pretty much got buses covered in Brick Notting with my red buses, uh, so I probably don't need that. But that, if I didn't have any, I would definitely be interested in. That is a very nice bus indeed. So, yeah, I think, again, two thumbs up for that set as well. Moving on to the cargo train, or the freight train, as they've called it this time. And, yeah, this is when uh, I'm not so positive. I mean, it does have good elements, uh, I won't deny, but I'm going to start with the locomotive, and that's probably the bit that I have the biggest problem with. If somebody said this was built in the future, and it was a very sort of uh, futuristic uh, train from, uh, you know, a decade uh, hence, then I think I'd believe you because it does look very unusual to me. Now, I'm not a train expert by any means, so maybe this is actually a real life train somewhere in the world. I don't know, but I don't know. It just looks a bit weird. Uh, we've kind of gone for a narrow, sort of four wide cab at the front with these two great big, sort of side walls. We've still got the symmetry. We've got what I always hate on these trains, which is kind of a hole for the button. I think you need to disguise that as much as possible and have it completely seamless. I don't dislike the movement of the colour on the stripes. I quite like that. Yeah, I think it's just the cockpits I don't really like. Uh, going on to the wagons, we've got a double container one, and I just think this is a bit weird, really, because we've got a box or two boxes here with some bread in them, not exactly high-value goods, on a pallet, and then the pallet is in a container. Yeah, it just seems like overly packed, if you ask me. And that gets even worse when we look at the other one. We've got two plants, cherry trees by the looks of things, on a pallet in a container. Well, that just doesn't seem realistic to me. Uh, so, yeah, I'm not a big fan of that. And there's not much to speak of on the wagon itself. Now, this great big loader is pretty cool. I don't need that because it's absolutely massive. I mean, one, two, three, four, five, six, twelve 12 studs wide, it looks um, but at least it gets a job done. So I kind of like uh, its mechanism and its playability, but it's probably not one for me. Uh, it does go uphill from here, at least, in that we've got this really nice, I think, double stacker sort of car transporter. So I really like that. Uh, and it looks like it should be able to take one car on there, one car on there, and one car in the middle on the bottom. So I think three cars, even though you only get two with it. So... That's fine. I really like that. Now, it might be a problem for me in that, well, it's probably going to be too tall from all my tunnels and so on. In fact, I think it'd be too tall from anyone who's got any obstacles in their city at all because it looks very high indeed. But otherwise, I like it. Uh, yeah, I'm not too keen on the charging station is the cargo of the next one, but I do very much like that dark turquoise colour as a... Uh, main theme for this wagon uh, and I really like the stickers that are very subtle on there and this flash of yellow in here so I really like this simple wagon here even though I probably would ditch the charging station here so I think these two wagons are of interest if they'll fit in Brick Nottingham now there is one more problem with this uh, and that's in the design really if I go onto this picture you'll see that the pantographs on the top of this do raise up because it's probably a hybrid train where you've got sort of diesel and electric or maybe it's just electric I don't really know but you see the height of that is that lower than the height of the car I think it is and if we go on to this you see it really is I mean look at that it's about that high oh <laughs> so that's a bit unrealistic as well and I think that shows that well that's probably going to be about the height of all of my tunnels so there's absolutely no way I can use this in my city, uh, unless I have no cars on the top deck, which sort of gets rid of the point of it. So, mm, probably a miss from me. But, you know, if you haven't got a cargo train, why not go for it? I don't know. Yeah, not too bad. <laughs> okay, so let's move on to the passenger train. And wow, this is a very different set. I mean, 
it's definitely one I went, wow, when I saw it. But it's kind of got positives and negatives, if you ask me. Uh, it's, I don't know. I don't know if I believe it, uh, if you see what I mean, in that it's incredibly pointy on the front. Very, very pointy, which makes me think it's kind of a real high speed sort of bullet train type thing. And then I look at the carriages and they look very sort of um, commuter type train carriages with a double door in the middle and so on. Not very luxury sort of long distance train, but very sort of stop and starty. And they're incredibly box like. I mean, I do like the fact that they're a bit longer using the 34 long um, bases with that sort of lower section. Now, they aren't making full use of the lower section with the floor level being a little bit raised, but it's just the fact that we've got this very small slope in. It's only one plate in height uh, rather than the usual sort of one brick height sort of slope in at the top. And it just makes them look really, really cuby. Yeah, I'm not a big fan. I do like the fact that we've got uh, disabled access, that we've got uh, the uh, sort of buffet car bit, disabled bit, and then regular seating and the bike storage area. So that's really good variety. I like that. And I kind of like the Lime, though I don't know, I just don't believe it. Mrs. Hood thinks the front looks a bit like a snake with these being the eyes and this kind of being the mouth. I can kind of see that. And again, we've got this sort of four wide cockpit bit, just like on the uh, freight train, with then two big sides on the front. And although I'm glad we didn't use a big sort of one-piece moulded cab in the front like we have on pretty much all the recent passenger trains. I'm not sure I like this either. I mean, this uh, window here is very square in this great big expanse of lime. Could have been a bit more pointy or something. And here we've just got tiles on the side to uh, sort of go on the side of where the battery box clearly is. And again, we've got a lot of this grey and a green button for turning on. I think that's far too visible for my liking. So... Yeah, I don't know. This roof being a bit like a truck roof for a road vehicle, just with these gaps in here. Yeah, it's not my favourite train, I must say. I'm probably not in the market for this one, although I am tempted uh, just for the channel's sake, really. But then again, I have got three passenger trains, so I don't need it at all. <laughs> On the bright side, we do have a nice bike with some sort of side saddle bits. We've got a very interesting new torso there. I can't work out if that's a new torso or what, because we've got kind of a backpack on his chest. Nice sign, nice platform, all the rest of it. So, yeah, if you don't have a passenger train, I think it's probably still a good buy. Moving on. Wow. Now we are into stunts, kind of round two, if you will. So in stunts round one, we just had some very basic kind of stuff where you had the motorized bikes and they're very good I mean they work fantastically well but it was kind of stuff that you'd push yourself or just throw them over a ramp nothing too amazing but now I think we've got the beginnings of a real game uh, a real game that kids can really sort of play competitively against each other or um, uh, kind of in a competition maybe with scoring or something because there's a lot more obstacles and a lot more skill to it now if you ask me so I really really like this I'm tempted to buy all of them quite frankly <laughs> and make a whole new area though goodness knows where because there isn't enough room in my city that's for sure uh, and this is just a fantastic example of what you're going to need to master basically because you're gonna have to get a really good trajectory to in go all the way around this loop the loop which it looks absolutely great, and then go over the jump, avoiding these low walls, and then presumably you might sort of hit the head of the chimpanzee, and I think that will cause his fists to sort of smash down and smash the wall. And if you're doing it competitively, then I think those bits might sort of get in the way of your progress, and the second person who uh, is following behind might find it a lot harder to complete the jump. So I think that's a really good addition to the uh, stunts line, this sort of element of scoring or competition. And it makes it look a lot more fun, if you ask me, than, say, the Mario line, which I can't really understand, quite frankly. Uh, and my favourite part of the whole set, I think, is the fact that some of these fans have got the purple sort of gloved uh, foam hand of the... Uh, crazy chimpanzee over here so that is absolutely great uh, and then we've got this winged stunt bike which is amazing we'll see another one that I think is a little bit better because it's in red later whereas this is in spring green which is a bit of an odd choice if you ask me but wow I want this set cool we'll see more of these speaking of which here's another one so I think this is genius I think they've done really well here 
We've got two now of the loop de loops. The only shame I think is I think this one should have been purple. And this one will then have an orange one and a green one, a uh, lime green, uh, because now we're going to have two orange ones if you're going to get both of these sets, which is a bit of a shame. But anyway, we've got one here where we do the loop de loop on the lime. And then I think the first person trips this red sort of back of mouth part. And then I think that will cause the mouth to snap shut, meaning that the second person <laughs> who's trying to compete won't be able to get through and they'll have to have another go, presumably scoring one penalty point. That's how I think of it. Uh, and then the second one is very similar. I think you have to go all the way through there. And then this looks like you maybe set off some flames, maybe sort of fireworks style. And then you go through the absolutely genius fire sort of gate or wall of fire, I suppose you'd call it. And you just fly through that. And this is just very sort of loose plastic. And you just fly through that for effect. And I think that looks brilliant. Really, really clever. I really love that. I would love to be a bit younger so I could just play with this all day. <laughs> and then we've got two more bikes. Um, that one's got a little bit of sticker or printing on. This one is the sort of cruiser type that I like to give to a biker gang or something like that, maybe. Some really interesting new figure torsos. And this rider looks really good as well. I bet the back prints are fantastic. That one looks really good as well. Yeah. Oh, and a blonde mullet, it looks like. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, love it. And I haven't even mentioned that truck. Can't work out if that's supposed to be an obstacle with a ramp or just storage for something else. Moving on. And here is another one of the competitive stages, as I see it. On this one, you've got these two barriers. And the first person who bashes through these sort of doors pulls on the chain pulls out one of these stops and then that's what uh, causes these blades to come chopping down and stop the progress of anyone who's following. So I think that makes it a real competitive thing as well. So I really like that. We've got a different sort of medium blue colored bike, another fantastic rider, somebody helping and loads and loads of speakers. Fantastic. I mean, the course with all of these will just be amazing. Then on the next one, similar stuff going on. On this one, we've got three sort of things balanced on the top of these uh, sort of, I don't know, dumbbell type things. So when you smash through, they cause them to fall and become obstacles or maybe take out another rider. So we've got a big cake, a scorpion and the cup. Another printed bike, another fantastic rider with these wonderful pigtails. Absolutely love that. And some glow in the dark stars. And I love those as well. I might have to buy absolutely loads of those and just stick them on the ceiling of well, the brick, uh, the brick room, the Lego room upstairs above Brick Nottingham, just to uh, have something for astronomers to look at. I think that'll look really good. And they will glow for ages like a child's bedroom. <laughs> Fantastic. So yeah, I'm absolutely loving this stunts line. And here's another one. So obviously you have to set this going uh, by spinning it first. So the sharks will just fly through this area and then you have to go through. And here is a pirate with I think new printing, but it's pretty similar to ones we've had before. And there is that red, wonderful bike with the wings on as a sort of aircraft. Absolutely adore that. And I don't know where these barrels are supposed to go, if they're just future uh, obstacles or decoration for this stage. I don't know. But yeah, it's a good novel idea. Not the best one, perhaps, in that you have to sort of set it spinning first. But yeah, I do like it. Then we're moving on to the farm stuff, and this is a long overdue area for Lego, I must say. I have already done a farm uh, in Brick Nottingham, so I'll probably only be interested in parts that can augment what I've already got. But here we've got some nice chickens in a really nice new colour, I think. They look dark orange to me, uh, and one more of those wonderful torsos that we're getting across a few of the sets. So like that one. This one I also like. The van is a bit similar to every single van we've had recently, uh, like ice cream vans, pizza vans and so on. But, you know, I do like it for a vegetable seller. Uh, it seems we've got the selling outside rather than inside, so I don't think we really need that opening window. But there's so many new pieces in here. We've got the torso. That looks like a new torso to me. We've got that new plant piece that's hanging down for chilies or grapes and hanging up for these wonderful new corn pieces. So that's really good. Uh, we've got a rabbit in grey. I'm pretty sure that's new. We've got this watering can, which isn't new, but is new to the city line, I think. Uh, and it's not that common yet. It was in Friends. Uh, so that would be a lot easier to get your hands on now. And I love this little 
uh, pump build. And I think there's a play feature in here somewhere. Uh, you see these sort of Technic pieces holding these shoots. I wouldn't be surprised if they can grow or something like that if you move something, but I may well be wrong. So yeah, a good set with loads and loads of really good pieces, that's for sure. Now, here is the, well, arguably the best set of the entire line, even though it looks like a four plus set, that we've got these very large pieces in the main builds and quite a simple looking tractor, but wow, don't we get amazing pieces with it. We've got to start with the animals. Uh, we get a butterfly, we get a pig, which we've had before, but we haven't had piglets before, and they are just adorable, if you ask me. Uh, we've got a sheep, but this time he's got a woolly jacket of all of his wool, and it looks like you can take that off and make him into a normal uh, sheep that we've had before, a streamlined one. So I imagine you won't be able to get the fleece pieces for absolutely months on bricks and pieces, because everyone will be buying them for their existing sheep as well. Uh, and then we've got a lamb, who is also very cute. Then we've got a cow in a new colouring with a cow scratching post. I think I'm going to have to steal that idea for my farm. <laughs> I do like the new colouring. Uh, and then the baby cow who's having a nice little wash. Oh, he's lovely as well. So I'm definitely in the market for all of these uh, baby animals for sure. Probably the cow, probably cost a fortune. And I've missed one out, a grey squirrel. I think we've had a grey squirrel before. Uh, I think that was one of the ones in that sort of park set. So this is absolutely great. I really like this sign on the top. You could use that in a supermarket or truck or anything really. I'm interested in seeing the front of these panels because I reckon they'll be printed. Uh, but yeah, this is just a packed and stacked set full of wonderful goodness. Not massively fond of the greenhouse because it's kind of open-sided by the looks of things. Anyway, moving on. Here we go, the supermarket. And I've just done my supermarket, so I know all about this. They've got some of the baskets outside. I may have to add these corn pieces because I do like them a great deal. I'm not going to buy about <laughs> 300 that I'll need for my cornfield in my farm. I do like the idea of the bunches of flowers in the front. I think that's a really good idea. And this is a new torso. We've had a pea suit before. I don't know if that's different from the one we've had on the series minifigure. And then look at that. We've got uh, an artificial leg, a blade type leg. That looks absolutely amazing. I adore that. Definitely have to get one of that. And we'll have that in an athlete form in no time, I'm sure. Uh, then we've got a trolley. And I do like this build. Apart from the fact it's missing its roof and missing the back. But it's just trying to do too much in one go. We've kind of got a till. We've kind of got some shelves inside. We've got bottles there, you can see. And we've got a loading bay, which is very clever. And it's got Technic uh, uh, support arms all hanging loosely from the front. So when you push something through, they kind of flap open and then swing back into position. And I think that's quite accurate to real life. But trying to do all of that in one very small footprint, I think may be a little bit too much, a bit too ambitious. But... Yeah, I like the signage, I like the 3D sign, and another new torso and a leg print as well. So yeah, I do like that set. And the sign's quite humorous as well. <laughs> Moving on, we've got three of these mission sets, which I'm not sure I'm that interested in. It seems you kind of build it one way and then build it a different way in creating a story uh, for yourself. But this is probably the best of the three in that we've got more animals going as well. Got a red, uh, red, black kitten over here, a lime kind of baby crocodile, and a grey, oh, what is that? No, probably medium nougat uh, hair, I think that is, with the longer ears than a normal rabbit. We've also got a faceless toy bunny rabbit here, and a dark orange owl. So there's loads of really good quality pieces in here, even though I'm not enjoying the builds as much as I am some of the others. Here is the space one of those adventure mission sets. And there's some good torsos in here, some good prints and so on. But again, I'm not crazy interested in this. I think on bricks and pieces, I might be in the market for this classic space logo flag and this one by two kind of cheese slope as well. This bit intrigues me a little bit. It looks like a very short bar piece, but it might be a three long one that's going right into the back of the gun, but it looks very short indeed. So that's uh, interesting at least. Oh, and I forgot to mention the really cool little robot dog. I adore him with his little ears using that bucket handle and the tail using uh, that uh, piece that holds a bar. 
Yeah, I really like that. That's great. I might have to make that out of pieces I've already got, though I will need the face. And then the last one of these is a police boat chase sort of set. And I think I've got this dog already. That's a very nice one. And it was quite hard to get. It was only in that, um, was it the Baryonyx set? Uh, so that's quite good to get. Some interesting torsos. A lot more of this uh, neon yellow uh, colour, but probably not one for me. Then we've got another farm set. Pretty basic, but pretty good value, really. You've got a good farmer, all these plant pieces, and a nice rabbit. And then we move on to Creator, and this is an absolutely fantastic one that I'm going to have to get, aren't I, for my uh, 20,000 bricks under the sea cabinet. This is called Sunken Treasure Mission, and that octopus is huge and brick built, but just perfect in my mind. I love the shape of his head. That is very accurate to life, if you ask me, and the eyes are very inquisitive. He kind of looks really noble, if you ask me. Uh, I don't need another submarine, but I do like this one's build. I really like the big sort of uh, Technic steering wheel pieces that are incorporated into the uh, uh, rotors at the back. And you now the arms are a bit interesting. These tanks are interesting. And the colour scheme's a bit different. And we've even got that uh, cockpit piece in Translight Blue, it seems. Why there would be a safe on the sea bottom, I don't know. I suppose it's just as likely as a treasure chest, but a safe doesn't seem to work for me. And the alternate builds, we've got a big lobster. I've already got a lobster planned. And what is that? Oh, that's a manta ray in red, dark red. But yeah, I like it. And loads of coral. Yeah, yeah, it's a really good set. And I imagine this will be quite good value because they often are these three in one. So, yep, I really like that set. Oh, and there's another picture of it without the box. Yeah, really good. Yeah, I like these sort of racks as well. They look very true to life. Yeah, cool. Here's another one. Now, this one I'm not a massive fan of, to be honest. Uh, it's a noodle shop with kind of a building above and another building over here, but they're all so small, and this one doesn't seem to have much to it. I mean, it doesn't have a business or anything like that. We do have a drinks machine and a nice noodle sign, but to me, this is actually less good than one of the side builds we got on the Monkey Kid set uh, in the first range of that. Uh, where well, we had a noodle shop with a big advert on the side and a drinks machine. I think it was just a lot more intricate, a lot more detailed. So I'd much rather have that one in a way, I think. Uh, otherwise, it's just kind of a standard creator build. And if it's, I don't know if it's my eye, but that just seems quite short this time. And it's literally six bricks high. Not even got a seventh one there. Yeah, so it looks a bit squat, if you ask me. The dog's interesting. And wow, we've had so many ice cream vendors. I'm not sure this one's the best either. So I think that's a definite pass from me, though I do like that sign. That is a good build. So I'll give it one tick for that. <laughs> then we've got the uh, Viking ship. Yeah, not for me. Not really what I'm interested in. But I do like some of these uh, helmets and hair pieces. Pretty interesting. The big catapult on the front reminds me of Game of Thrones a bit. Then on to Disney. Well, nothing much for me here. Uh, those caravan pieces look quite interesting. They're all sort of one piece, but uh, yeah, I mean, if I could squeeze a battery box in between two of those and maybe have a middle section with a switch in it, it might be quite interesting. Otherwise, no, I don't think there's anything there for me. Interesting torsos, though. I bet you can't buy them individually on bricks and pieces when they turn up. Uh, this is interesting as well. I like that printed piece for the fairground. That's very appropriate. Otherwise, a bit of a basic ride. Nope. Uh, here, another couple of really good torsos. And with a crown on, that being the sigil of Brick Nottingham, that would be great if I could get that grey one and this pink one and even this jester one. But again, I bet because it's a licensed range, they won't be available. Um, nope, nothing for me there, though I do like those doors. I don't think they're printed. I think that's a sticker. So, no, no, thank you. No, nothing for me there, I don't think. Nope. And on to friends. Nope, can't see anything worth commenting on there. All there. Now, here's an interesting set. So this is a roller disco, and that's the main sort of area there. Quite like these lockers. And the sign there. I really like this bowling sign. And we've had kind of a similar sign to that before. But yeah, it's really good in sticker form. That's a good sticker for a controller. And 
the scoreboard. That's really good. So I like all of that. I really love this arcade game, but it could have had a steering wheel, if you ask me, rather than uh, the joystick, given it's a driving one. That's really good. I've done my build version of that, and I've done my build version of that, but they're very good, and I really like the arca arcade sign there. So this looks like it hinges closed, which is quite interesting as well, but probably for me, I'll probably just be interested in the sticker sheet for that one, but it's a good set. I like it. Moving on. Surf shop, yeah, not so interested in that, but I do very much like this windsurfer. I've got quite a few, so I don't need it at all, but I do like the different colour scheme of that. But otherwise, it's just uh, more brightness, a la friends normal. <laughs> then this is more interesting, uh, an art school. I'm not sure about the big pencil and uh, paintbrush there, but uh, you could convert this to a more sort of normal build, I suppose taking off all this art off the side, but then I don't know if it would be that good if you did all that either. So that's probably a pass from me. But I do think it's got some sort of repurposing potential to it. Uh, I do quite like these two easels on the go. They look good. Oh, and that's quite an interesting use of that tow bar piece there as the back of the easel. So yeah, there's some good, good things in there. It'd be interesting to see the insides of that. Uh, a recycled truck. We've had a city one of those before, but not for ages. I do like the litter picker, uh, but the colour scheme of this just kills it for me. <laughs> I'm a bit of a traditionalist when it comes to these uh, uh, bright colours on absolutely every surface. Uh, now, this is great. Assembly theatre. I really like this. Uh, obviously, the two Muppets sort of um, critics need to go in one of these boxes, obviously, so they can say... Uh, more rubbish get off <laughs> or something like that and I think this is just begging for a kind of modular build isn't it with these bits on the side because I think they fold to close up to make the um, closed version like that and it's got a lovely front I love these billboards for example so I think you need to modularize this don't you quite clearly that needs to be the front then it needs to be kind of duplicated so these are the sides on the inside much more seating on the floor and then I think it'd be pretty much perfect yeah I do like the way they've done the backdrop with the side and I bet you can change those as well and then we've got a different tree piece here in a different color at least kind of a dressing up box and hats and costumes and all the rest of it so do you know what I could even see myself getting this and trying to modularize it yeah, a ticket booth window, and there's another really good sticker. And the colour scheme, though bright, isn't too bad. You see, we've got more of this turquoise that they're in love with. <laughs> Absolutely everywhere this year. Um, but, yeah. Oh, and this sign here. Yeah, I do like that. I, I'm tempted. I'm tempted, I must say. Moving on, more ice cream. Yeah, let's just pass that one. This boat does look good. Again, with the colours, this spring green on the bottom, I'm not a fan of, especially with the turquoise as well. I would almost consider getting rid of that sticker and maybe the spring green changing it to, I don't know, a normal blue or something like that. Then I think this is actually quite a nice set and I might get rid of the coral as well. Then I think it's good and we need a better wheel setup, I think. Yeah, so if you reduce the colour palette so it wasn't such a sort of, I don't know, shouting match <laughs> then i think this would be really good as well uh yeah i mean the shape of the cabin's absolutely perfect and i like the big sails as well and that's one of those uh sort of wind speed monitors on the top as well so yeah i like that is that a drone there i don't know what that is on the front or maybe it's something to tie rope around i'm not sure yeah no yeah, so quite an interesting set hey a giraffe um yeah the problem with this is, for me, they've they've put this sort of eye makeup eye on. <laughs> it's got big eyelashes and kind of eyeliner. And I just take the way they do that on all their animals. Does it need it? And I think the proportions are different. I think the legs look too long compared with the neck. Or, or rather, maybe the legs are right, but the neck should be longer. I think the head should be about here. I don't think it looks quite right to me. So it's a shame they do this eye, because then you could use it in City. I mean, you could still use it in City, but I think it would look better in City if it didn't have that eye. And this one's just a bit too twee as well. The building's nice. That could easily be converted to pretty much anything. Again, I think there's probably too many colours going on <laughs> for me, again. And, yeah, that's not a great vehicle. But, 
Yeah, so probably not a set for me. I don't need a uh, giraffe. I'm not going to be doing a zoo or anything like that. Moving on. Uh, moving on. Uh, this looks quite good fun. I like the lockers. Uh, I like the fact we've got the lollies. I think we've had both these colours before. Water gardens. like these tubes, but it's nothing new. Quite good stickers. Yeah, moving on. Right, we're on to Harry Potter now. And some of these aren't so new, uh, so I'll probably fly through these a bit quicker. I'm not sure if I want one of these for Brick Nottingham, but they look very interesting sort of spooky animals. I know nothing about Harry Potter, so forgive me. Uh, nothing for me in there, I don't think. That just looks like another section of, well, Hogwarts again. It's interesting they've used this piece backwards and these backwards. Bit of uh, variety of texture, presumably. Uh, yep, another section of a building, though I really do like this coloured cat. So that's uh, a new one, I think. This, now, now you're talking, this looks absolutely great. And it's modular again. So we've got kind of two towers of three high on each side at the moment, but you can take all of these apart. So you could make it three towers of two, or if you've got two of these sets, you could make it kind of six towers of two and make a proper size building out of it. Because if anything, the problem at the moment is that you can kind of see the sides too much and it's not going to mesh with uh, the rest of your buildings very well. But I think if you got two of these sets and had one, two, three, four, five, six on one side, sort of three along and two high, and then the same on the other side, still with this, and maybe because you had two of the sets, you can make it double-sided. I think it looked really good, kind of like in the entryway to Apollo Arcade or something like that. However, that said, I think it's still going to be very hard to incorporate properly. Uh, I'm sure somebody will do a really good job. I'm not sure that person is me. We've got a ghost cat, as I see it. Uh, I know it's not a ghost in this. It's like a magic animal or whatever. But um, yeah, that's how I see it. So I do like it. I do think it's repurposable. But I'm not sure that I'm going to. But I do like it a great deal. I don't like this telephone booth. I like the door. That looks very right. These sides look very, very wrong to me. Uh, but I do like these corner pieces on the top. I think I can steal that uh, to improve on the one that I sent through uh, Brick Hall recently from a subscriber. So, yeah, I might be copying the top part of that build to make that even better. So, yeah, pretty good set, but probably not one for me. Not for me, but awesome. And turning this to make the wings go absolutely great i love these new broom pieces they look really good real improvement this is a great set again for the animals for me this evil looking dog looks absolutely great sort of hand of the baskervilles type thing i imagine that's what it took influence from i like this glow in the dark moon that's caused the uh, werewolf to come about i've got to get him he's absolutely awesome scary tree yeah, uh, what's it called? A weeping willow, shrieking willow? I don't know. This is how little knowledge I have on Harry Potter. But I've seen this set before, and I think this is the best one of it that I've seen. So, yeah, it's really good. I like this printed window here. This is a really good sort of shape for a boarded up window. So, yep, I like that. I'll be interested on in seeing the insides of that as well, if it has some. This is a really nice set as well. Um, now, I know it's got the play feature where this middle building kind of disappears and the other two close together, so it kind of uh, is a secret location, but you really could just use this as a, a sort of terraced street, as a facade, and I would put these two stickers on the outside, onto doors as well, maybe just chop out a little section for a door handle so they all look the same, and they would open up into three different buildings, and I would get, probably get rid of the play feature. So... Could I incorporate that in Brick Nottingham? I probably could. I'm not sure I'm going to, but I could. Uh, broom pieces, like them. Another cool looking cat. Very nice indeed. Now to Monkey Kid. And that's crazy, isn't it? Absolutely crazy. And that's what we love about Monkey Kid. Uh, so yeah, I'm probably not in the market for that, but I love it. I love the fact it exists. <laughs> and if you look inside it, wow, we've got a little race car that is absolutely adorable. Loads of new pieces and prints and all sorts. I like the basketball net. Another sort of game. I think that must be an arcade game. <laughs> I love the rack for all the different weapons. Table tennis table. Kind of chef station. Is that a wok? 
that looks cool. Is that a new piece or is that, oh, it's probably just a, a, a dish piece, isn't it? On one of those one by ones with a stick. But it's a cool idea. I like that. A wok. Yeah, very good. So yeah, a great set, but probably won't be buying that one. And then look at this. Wow, it is literally heavenly. Uh, I think these pieces are all sort of thin plastic ones with the clouds on. But wow, it just looks so impressive, doesn't it? This tree is perfect. It kind of has peaches all over it. And that temple is beautiful as well. And it all sort of moves mechanically. I don't quite get why or how. But if I was in a market for another sort of Japanese style temple, I would probably get this one because it is absolutely beautiful. I think the color scheme of this is amazing. And the red doors, wow, brilliant. Actually, I love those doors. Are they a new piece or are they brick built? It's kind of hard to tell from this. I think they're brick built, but they are really nice. Yeah, yeah, very good set, that one. Then here's a really crazy one. Uh, I think this is the penultimate one we're going to be looking at. Mythica, which is going to be a promotional Legoland set with a kind of winged lion thing. So that would make it, would that make it a griffin or a man? A griffin, I think. Yeah. And a kind of gate thing there and a weird unicorn thing and some carnivorous plants. So yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> Uh, and then I'm not doing all the Ninjago sets, but I thought I'd do one because it's just so awesome. This is Lloyd's Golden Ultra Dragon, and Ultra it certainly is, because look at the size of the thing. Four heads, red one, uh, blue one, yellow one, and I don't know, what is that, purpley brown or something? Absolutely awesome. Uh, I'm almost tempted to get this. And look at this gold guy in the throne. A future baddie for Brick Nottingham? <laughs> I don't know. Wow, and these dinosaurs, sort of dragon, well, dragon actually, aren't they? Dragon heads in pink for the troops. I mean, if you're going to do an army build and have loads of these with a kind of double-edged uh, glaive type things, wow. Oh, that is, <laughs> that is a very cool set. Right. Wow. What a wonderful set of releases. I think this is the best set of releases I can remember. And that is why I made this video. <laughs> So do tell me if you want a video like this every time there is a big Lego release. I'm sort of thinking that it would be most appropriate when there's sort of city or an absolute load of sets that might be relevant to my channel. But um, yeah, it'd be really good to have your feedback either way. So as always, thank you very much for watching. It is appreciated. Do remember to like, comment and subscribe for more awesome LEGO videos. And if you value this channel, there are many ways in which you can support it. Do check out the links in the description below, including clicking on the uh, LEGO store link for making all of these new purchases. <laughs> uh, next time on Robin Hood Bricks, we'll be doing a ocean base build, uh, continuing what we did last week. Uh, so until then, see you!